Hello, and welcome to another episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this episode, I will be reviewing Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. I won't make this a long intro, but before I move on with the review, I just have to say one thing. If you want to play this game, make sure you get it on PC. Unfortunately, this game was rushed, and when it was released, it was missing content. But thanks to the Sith Lords Restored Content mod, and the M478 mod, we have the full experience of the game. And just to let you know before the review, I'm using the Sith Lords Restored Content mod and the M478 mod. And there will be minor spoilers in this review. But, enough with the intro. Let's move on to my review of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords. The story starts off with your character surviving an ambush thanks to a character named Kreia. A mysterious character that you share a force bond with. While you're on that ship, you run into T3M4 and Atten. You escape the ship and head off the Telos. That's how this game starts. There are so many things to talk about and I can't tell you everything in this review, and I'm not going to, but I have to tell you some things before I give you my opinion. This game takes place several years after Knights of the Old Republic. The Jedi Order are a shell of its former self. They are almost done. The Sith are on a warpath, the Republic is on its last legs, and you, being one of the last remaining Jedi, are being hunted by the Sith. Now, that's a lot to handle. I think we can agree on that, but there's more. Minor spoiler alert, you have been warned. As you progress through the story, and this happens in the beginning, you run into Atris, a Jedi from your character's past. You end up finding out that your character was exiled from the Jedi Order because of your involvement in the Mandalorian Wars. You served under Revan, and the Jedi did not like that. Instead of asking you why you did it or trying to understand where you're coming from, they told you to leave. They made you an exile. And after your encounter with Atris, you are on a mission to find the Lost Jedi, the people who made you an exile, the people who cast you out of the Jedi Order. Find them and try to figure out the reasoning behind their actions and maybe get a little revenge too. Well, that's up to you. Okay, I don't want to spoil more of the story, so I'm going to stop there. What are my thoughts about the story in Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords? I really enjoyed the story in this game. I was really impressed by the writing of this game. Obsidian did a fantastic job, and when you get the Lost Content mod, it really puts everything together. This game is much darker than the first one. This is not your typical good versus evil story. You have to read into everything. You have to look into the motives and the backgrounds of each character. This game explores the area between good and evil, the gray area. You and your companions, you all have something in common. You are all haunted by your past. You carry these massive burdens on your shoulders, and when you talk to each of your companions and learn their backgrounds and what they want to do, how they think, you start to understand that this is not your typical hokey good versus evil storyline where it's 100% we're good and 100% they're evil. There's something different here. The writers, the developers, they actually humanize characters that most companies wouldn't touch because it would be too hard or people might not understand. Obsidian did a great job with the story. They tried something different. They took risk. And they tried something that is very difficult. Exploring the gray line between good and evil. They didn't copy and paste Bioware's type of writing. And I'm not knocking Bioware. I enjoyed Knights of the Old Republic 1. But Obsidian did something different. And that's a good thing. One of my favorite things about this game is Visus Mar, your relationship with this character, her relationship with the other companions, especially Brianna. It's very interesting learning about her background, the type of person that she is, where she comes from, who she serves. I'm not going to say anything more because I don't want to spoil anything, but it was one of my favorite parts. And I have to mention this. Of course I have to mention this. One of my favorite characters is in this game. I think you know who I'm talking about. Darth Nihilus. That's a plus in my book. Now, I've said a lot of good things about the story, but is it perfect? No. I think that at the very end of the game, it drags on a little bit too long, especially at the last planet. I think it was just longer than it should have been, but that's a minor issue. I also have another minor issue, the planet M478. I thought this planet was going to be very fun and interesting, but 
I found it kind of dull. It wasn't the puzzles. The puzzles weren't that hard, but it was just boring. I did not get much enjoyment out of it. But once again, that's a minor issue. Now, there's something major that I have to talk about. This game was rushed, and when it was released, it was not in a good state. You have to get the mod, the Lost Content Restored Pack, if you want the full experience. So make sure you get that. So overall, Obsidian did a great job with the story. It's darker. It explores the gray line. The characters are interesting. The story is interesting. There's a lot going on, but not enough to overwhelm you. It's easy to follow if you just pay attention. Now, let's move on to gameplay. The gameplay in Knights of the Old Republic 2 is similar to the first game. There are new items and new force powers, but the combat is the same. It's plausible real-time combat, and I believe it's based off the D20 system. What that means is, you can pause the game during combat and make different strategies, command your characters to do certain things, but if you're familiar with Knights of the Old Republic 1, you should have no problems getting into the combat and the gameplay of Knights of the Old Republic 2. I do have a minor issue with the combat. Near the end, I think the game becomes way too easy on the normal difficulty, especially if you have dark side powers like Force Storm. But there's a simple solution to that. Increase the difficulty. So I thought that the normal difficulty should be a little harder, but it's just a minor issue since you can ramp up the difficulty. Now, the gameplay is similar to the first game, but that doesn't mean it's 100% identical. For example, the influence system. When you're with a party member, you can lose or gain influence with that member, whether it's because of a conversation you had, or you preferring one member over another, or something that you did and that member liked or disliked it, you can lose or gain influence. When you gain influence with your party members, they start trusting you, they open up to you, you learn more about their history, their motives, etc. It's a good system, and when you start losing influence, they might not even want to talk to you. I think the influence system is a good improvement and I'm glad they put that in this game. Now, some of the most important things about a role playing game, in my opinion, are the choices that you make and the situations you're in. And Knights of the Old Republic 2 does not disappoint. When I first started to play the game, I wanted my character to be dark, pure evil. I love playing the bad guy and I love using force lightning. But at the end of the game, my character was gray. He wasn't good, he wasn't evil, he was just in the middle. And that's because the choices that you make in this game, the situations, are interesting and I read every line of dialogue, carefully planning my choices for my character. For someone like me, when I play a role playing game, I take my time. I want the dialogue to be well written and I want your choices to matter. And Knights of the Old Republic 2 did a great job because of its dialogue, because of the way the game is written and the way they tell the story. It does a really good job and I'm happy with the role playing elements. It's not anything too complex. You don't have to write anything down. And if you're used to role playing games, especially CRPGs, you should have no problems figuring this game out. The dialogue, the situations, the atmosphere is what really shines in this game. I'll give you an example of one situation, and once again, minor spoiler alert, you have been warned. On the planet Telos, there is a dispute between the Zerka Corporation and the Athorians over the Telios Restoration Project. I chose to side with Zerka Corporation because of the money, but after I was done with the quest, I looked back and realized that I think I made a mistake because Overall, I think siding with the Athorians would have been better for the game and would have been a better choice for the quest, but that's because of the writing. Now, this is my opinion, but if you have great writing in a role-playing game, at some point you should look back at some of the quests that you did or a quest and think about it and think if you made the right decision or I should have went another way or picked another option. If you have great writing, then you'll be able to do that in a role-playing game. And in KOTOR 2, I did do that. Now, I have to talk about some minor issues. Bugs and glitches. This game got a huge update last year, and it really helped. The game is easier to run, but still, there are some bugs and glitches. My character going into walls and things just skitzing out. It happened a couple of times, and it's not a big deal. But one of the things that kind of annoyed me the most, no, it really annoyed me the most, was a dialogue glitch and this happened a couple of times throughout the game. I'm talking to someone and the dialogue would skip ahead really fast. 
I'm not clicking anything, I'm not skipping through it, but it would just speed ahead and I could not read what's going on. That was very annoying. I had to leave the game and start it up again. It's just, that was annoying. So yeah, that was really annoying. So overall, I enjoyed the gameplay. Yes, it's similar. And yes, the combat, it really didn't add anything new besides new items and new force powers. But I can forgive that because of the dialogue and the situations, the atmosphere and things like that. So let's move on to sound and atmosphere. I barely have any complaints about the sound and atmosphere. The voice acting is excellent. The music, I love the music, especially the Jedi Enclave Rebuilt theme. I was engrossed in this game, thanks to sound, atmosphere, the writing, the characters, all of it. I was just involved, I wanted to know everything about the game, explore every area, go to every planet, try to do every side quest. That's how good this game is. You don't have to be a fan of Star Wars in order to enjoy this game. About the graphics, I enjoyed the graphics. I don't have a problem with graphics from 2004 or 3, whenever this came out. I don't have a problem with it. I like gameplay over graphics. The graphics did enough for me. I just have one complaint. I wish there were more animations during combat, but that's a minor issue. I definitely recommend Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. The writing is excellent. The atmosphere, the sound, the characters, the way the story is told. It's bleak, it's dark, it explores the area between good and evil. I definitely recommend playing this game. And if you do play it, make sure you get it on PC. Any desktop or laptop can run this game. And make sure you get the Sith Lords Restored Content Mod. Now, if you're wondering which game do I like better, the first or second Knights of the Old Republic, I think Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords is the better game. Don't get me wrong. I like the first KOTOR, I love it, but Knights of the Old Republic 2 is the better game in my opinion. Let me know what you think about this. You can leave a comment or you can message me on Twitter. You know where to find me. Have a great day.